Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Wednesday, October 30th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We got two college football games on the Wednesday night, both nationally televised in Conference USA. We're going to be breaking them down now. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. If you disagree, all is welcome. Smash that like button if you're liking the content, guys. We got 7 p.m. Eastern time. First game up, CBS Sports Network. It is Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks, up against the Liberty Flames. We are seeing Liberty anywhere from minus two to minus two in the hook, depending where you're shopping. 63 being the total. Looks like 75 degrees, clear skies in Lynchburg, Virginia. Jacksonville State comes in four and three on the season. Liberty five and one on the year. However, Liberty just one and five against the spread. And you might remember just last week, Liberty got upset. And it was one of the biggest upsets of the entire college football season. They were going off as huge favorites. They lost outright to Kennesaw State as, I believe, 26-point favorites. This is a Liberty team that I think, you know, you, we see it in the record, 5-1, and one, yet just 1-5 and five against the spread. This is a team that's kind of overrated, whether it has to do with last year um, and carrying it over to this year. I feel that that this Liberty Flames team is not as good as as the odds makers are saying here. I mean, they've let up 24 plus points in three straight games, and that's against Kennesaw State. That might be one of the worst, probably is the worst offense in all of college football. FIU with a beat up quarterback in East Carolina. They also let up 24 plus points against New Mexico State, who does not have a good offense in Campbell from the FCS level. Now they're going up against Jacksonville State here. Rich Rod is their head coach. They got a really good quarterback. I think his last name's Huff. Um, He's a good player back there. He makes plays with his feet. He can throw the ball really well. This is a Jacksonville State team, top 10 in the nation in terms of pace of play, seconds per snap. They've scored 40-plus points in four straight games. They've scored over 200 points the last month, the last four games. Uh, this Jacksonville State team, I think, is underrated, guys. I really do. They had a tough schedule early, and then once they, once they've gotten to Conference USA, obviously, you know, rattling off four straight wins, four straight covers. I think going off as the dog here. I think it's wrong team favored. The market, you know, was Liberty minus one, and now it's Liberty minus two and a half. So I'm kind of going up against this market move, but. I almost think it's a lot of people digging into up oh, Liberty lost last week. Now they're going to bounce back at home. I don't think so though, guys, when you watch these two teams play Jacksonville state is playing the much, much better football at this point in the season. I think they're just going to score a bunch of points. Um, I think there's a lot of points in this game, but for the show, we're going sidewise. We can get two in the hook here on Jack state. Also note it, ha- it isn't touching three, at least when I'm doing the show right now, Pay attention to that because odds makers don't want to put out that key number of three. I think there's something to that as well. We're going Gamecocks of Jacksonville State to go into Lynchburg and give Liberty Liberty their second straight loss. So it's Jacksonville State over Liberty to start us off here Wednesday night college football. Staying in Conference USA for the next matchup. Then I'll answer a couple of questions at the end, guys. So a uh, reminder, comment below. Any questions, fire away. We'll do this again as the show continues. But only two games on the Wednesday slate. So we're breaking them both down now, 30 minutes later on ESPN2 Conference USA matchup, Kennesaw State in Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers hosting the owls of Kennesaw State. 49 being the total. We're seeing WKU, Western Kentucky, minus 24 point home favorites. LT Stadium, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Looks like 80 degrees, 15 mile an hour winds here. Western Kentucky comes in five and two on the season, six and one against the spread. They've covered six straight. Their only non cover was week one. They got blown out by Alabama. I think they lost 60 to nothing, 63 nothing, something like that. But they've covered six straight. Speaks to the profile week one in both college football and the NFL. If a team loses big, Sometimes they're like a good team to look to bet on in the coming weeks. Western Kentucky checks that box. Only if we had a time machine to go back, could have made some money on that. But, hey, it is what it is. Actually, if you've been watching the show, we've been betting on them a couple times of recent. Unfortunately, haven't rid all, all of those six games. 
But breaking this one down, guys, I think this is the best team in Conference USA. When it's all said and done, I think Western Kentucky is going to win it. However, I think Jacksonville State has a, has a say in that. But I do think Western Kentucky is the most talented team in the conference. And I think Kennesaw State is the weakest team in the conference. So this is this is top versus bottom of this conference. I'll also add on, if you're not too familiar with Conference USA and, you, you know, you watch more SEC, Big Ten, but you like to bet these midweek games, salute to that. You know, it's a, it, it, we're each his own. I follow Conference USA closely, like Conference USA, Sunbelt, the MAC. I love betting these midweek games. This conference is like the the who's in the 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 knots, you know, it, it's kind of top heavy. And therefore, you know, if you're looking to bet on a team and kind of lay some points, I think this is a situation to do so. I mean, Kennesaw State, they're one and six straight up. They're two and five against the spread. They've been burning cash outside of last week. Now, the, it might have been the biggest upset in all of college football, 26 and a half point underdogs. They win outright over Liberty, but I think that speaks to Liberty being overrated a little bit more than Kennesaw State being good. If you watch this Kennesaw State team play, they almost remind me of like a high school offense that that doesn't have a good quarterback where you just kind of say like, oh, we're going to put our best athlete behind, you, you know, as a signal caller, taking the snaps and just kind of make plays with your feet, see if you can make something happen. When you watch Kennesaw State play, that's how they play offensively. They're not very good. I mean, their quarterback Bryson uh, Davis, Bryson, he's a pretty, he's a decent athlete back there. But you know, he's five nine, hundred ninety pounds. Uh, he's only thrown for eight hundred yards this season. He's got three touchdowns and six interceptions. You know, two to one interception to touchdown ratio. That's not good in college football. Not good at any level of football. And when you look at their point production. I mean, they scored five points against Middle Tennessee State. That Middle Tennessee State defense is awful. They get gashed by everybody. They only scored five points against them. They've only, they have only they only scored 13 points against UT Martin of the FCS level. They've had two scores or less in five of their seven games this season. They just don't score very many points outside of last week. Now, off of that big upset, this week, no extra time to prepare. They're going on the road to Bowling Green to face the best team in the conference, in my opinion, this is a terrible spot for Kennesaw State. I mean, Western Kentucky is a team, yes, they're 5-2 and two on the season, but they kind of played a tough schedule. I mean, coming into Conference USA, they're 3-0 and oh so far in Conference USA play. And in the three conference games, they've scored 124 points. They've beat the closing spread in CUSA play, by more than 50 points, not beating their opponent by 50 combined points, 50 combined points more than the odds makers are saying they're going to beat their opponents by. They're being underpriced in this league, guys. Now, it, obviously, that's not going to work, you know, uh, for the, you know, forever. But at this point, I still don't think 24 points is enough. I really don't. I, I think this is something like 42 to 7 you know, 45 to nothing. I think this is an absolute blowout. I think Western Kentucky's the side. I, I like the alt, you know, alt spreads as well. Western Kentucky minus 31, minus 35. I think it's all hilltoppers here, guys. So we're going Western Kentucky minus 24 over Kennesaw State. Got some time for, for some questions. A reminder, if you want to check out premium picks, got the 5% max limit going up tonight in a uh, – in, in a bet we didn't we actually didn't didn't give out on the show um so check that out five percent max limit on a on a nice little run here in uh the premium plays the show on a recap of 42 and 28 that's 60 percent plus 11 units over the last five weeks so uh hey 60 percent giving it out for free if you can help me out smash that like button it helps out the algorithm guys got a couple questions here and speaking of the recap, I'll start with one that is a, a negative kind of connotation towards me, which is fine. You want to troll? Feel free to fire away in the comments below. This is from Eddie Mush for Life, last Friday's show. How did you do Thursday, Drew? Why don't you recap your previous day? Oh, I know why you don't talk about yesterday. It's because you went 0-3 and told pe people to play the Vikings, a massive public side. Would you have brought up yesterday if you went 3-0? and Of course you would. Be transparent. 
Well, Eddie Mush for Life, um, look, I gave out the recap 42 and 28, 60% on today's show. I'm doing this at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. So tonight's Conference USA games are about to kick off within a half hour. I don't know the recap for tonight, Eddie Mush. Uh, th that's kind of the way that this goes sometimes. I'm doing this so I can get it out early in the morning and we can put it up on the YouTube channel to get more views. So throw that out on my recap for 42 and 28, 60%. It does not include the Tuesday night. Sometimes I probably do need to be transparent with that. But Eddie Mush for Life, speaking to that, no, if I went 3-0 three, three and oh on that day's show, I would not have been able to recap that either. So I, I appreciate the comment, um, but I, it, it, it doesn't have a, a whole lot of merit to it because, no, I do try to be transparent on this. Also want to give a shout out to the people saying, you know, the guys like him are annoying, you know, free picks. Thank you, guys. G Hurt in, in particular. Uh, I absolutely love how mad – people get about someone else's picks. Hey, it's part of the business, G here. And I've been called worse, man. Uh, I get up here and, and go every single day giving out sports picks. And I'm obviously going to be wrong. Um, and people are, can call me whatever they want. So it is what it is. Um, but Eddie Mush for Life, that is the reason I actually did not um, recap that day. Got, a, got another one here. John, a Miamian. Will you be handicapping other winter sports? And he's missing the MLB picks. Well, John, I appreciate it. And a Miamian is somebody from Miami, uh, like a Floridian. John, I appreciate the comment, man. Yeah, in, in MLB, if you were watching the show, I, I tend to go with underdogs a lot. And for whatever reason, in the NLCS, ALCS, and World Series, the underdogs I, I haven't really liked. So I don't like laying big price tags in these big games in MLB. So if I, if I get something I like, I'll give it out. But uh, that's the reason I've kind of been shying away from the World Series and give, giving out those picks because I haven't been betting them myself and I don't like laying big numbers in Major League Baseball. So that's the reason there. And the other winter sports, yeah, college basketball. Um, I'll be, I'll be doing college basketball on the show with the premium picks. It's, uh, it's a sport I've, I've really come into tune with. I think eight, eight of the last nine seasons have all been profitable and it kind of works into the next, the next question here from Jay genuinely curious because I don't know what sport is your specialty. Well, thanks for that, Jay. Um, I mean, if you went over the record, Jay, it, it would be college basketball. I've had the most profits in college basketball. However, having said that, college football is probably the one I spend the most time on, maybe because I like it the most. I'm not really sure. It's been profitable as well. The NFL is probably a sport. I, I really only do four, maybe five if you count Mexican baseball, but that's only because I moved to Mexico. My wife's Mexican. I like the sport of baseballs. And I think it's kind of a niche sport, so I'm starting to handicap it more. I do think it's a beatable, quote-unquote, sport, but I, I just don't have the track record to put that up there with. So I, I really only do four sports because I think specialty is the way to kind of win in this business, Jay. And so I would say college basketball and college football, also Major League Baseball, because over the summer it's really the only sport, so I can spend a lot of time in it. And baseball this season was great. Um and then the NFL is probably the sport I, I spend the least amount of time. However, it's been like three years now of profits. If you go back like three years and I do the NFL opening line report with uh, Teddy Covers, I take notes. It's a great show to watch. He throws out a bunch of information and then I watch the games as well. However, I will say like I'm not spending my Sunday like like my Saturday. My Saturday, I'm, I'm in front of the t multiple TVs trying to take notes on every single game. Sunday, it's more just kind of watching, you know, taking in the information. And then I do the show with Teddy, taking his notes. I have my looks. And it's been great the last couple of years. So NFL has been good as well. But I don't do a whole bunch of sports, Jay. So uh, thanks for throwing that out, man. I got uh, Jameson asking last week, Drew, I notice you don't cuss on the shows. Do you not believe in curse words? Well, Jameson, anything is welcome. Um Actually, I try not to. I mean, you know, you never know who's listening type deal. 
but really the the reason I don't like to cuss on on video, you know, if you caught me like late on a happy hour, who knows? I might let let something slip with with some friends, but it's because I used to work for a show for a company called SBR Sportsbook Review, and they they used to cuss on their shows all the time. And I never would. And I noticed that because people would DM me, like message me, and it was uh, dads with their kids. And three different times, guys would say, hey, I like listening to your show about sports betting, sports betting because I can have my kids in the car and I don't have to worry about you cussing. So I always kept that in my mind to kind of be respectful. You never know who's watching the video. So that's all. No, I don't have anything against it. I feel like anybody can kind of uh, uh, throw out whatever they want, man. So I think that's all the questions from the last like two weeks. But um, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Th thank you for actually spending the time and asking the questions. That That's really cool. And uh, hopefully I gave you some good answers. So feel free to fire away, guys. Any other questions, I'll answer them as the show goes on, on, on days like this where we only have two games. Um, but yeah, guys, in recap, we got uh, Jacksonville State Liberty. We're on the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State plus two and a hook. Granted, I'm doing that in the overnight market. The number might move. And we have Western Kentucky, Kennesaw State. It is hilltoppers all the way. We are laying the wood. It's minus 24 flat here. So hopefully keep the winners coming to you. Smash that like button. Comment below, guys. Check out Premium Picks, wagertalk.com, at Drew Martin Betts on Twitter. That's going to do it for the Wednesday show. Thanks for tuning in. Cash those tickets. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. And we'll be back on Thursday breaking them down. So come back and join us. Until then. Cash those tickets, stay out of trouble, stay safe, and we'll talk tomorrow.